Hi everyone, welcome to another Thrift Witch thrifting haul video. Today I'm going to be showing you some items that I recently purchased at my local thrift store and I'll be sharing with you the total of the haul, how much it cost, and I'll point out a few of the items that contributed the most to that but I still felt were worth picking up for resale. You may have seen um, a couple of these guys friends in a previous video. These are some creepy looking clowns with instruments playing an instrument. Uh, I previously did did pick up two of these at the same thrift store. Um, and so the reason that I picked these additional two up is that a set of four all playing different instruments is more appealing and will probably sell easier than just the pair. And also, interestingly, you know, going back today, these were actually priced more inexpensively than what the previous two were. So when I put the four together, I now actually can, can ask a bit more and I can profit a little bit more from the set. I don't know anybody who would want to keep these four clowns in their house, but there are people out there that like clowns, um, and I expect that someone will be delighted to have these. Why, I don't know. So another item that I picked up today is, well, more than one item. Sometimes when you go to the thrift store, what you'll see is definitely it's a situation where someone has donated a collection of items or you know, perhaps even an estate has um, decided to donate items from someone's home. So in this case, I found quite a few poodles today, vintage poodles with good age. So I found this little guy here, he's chalkware, and he is spray painted. Um, this, is, this is commonly what you see with these older pieces of chalkware, the paint's applied with spray. They're often very brightly colored, carnival basically prize items. He's in reasonably good shape. He's lost one of his paws, which, you know, for his age is not too shocking. He's a sweet poodle, standard poodle, cut with the standard poodle haircut. Then we have a couple smaller pieces. This was part of a set of shakers. This poor poodle, he's had a rough life. He's had one leg and his tail repaired, you know, but he is vintage. He is marked Japan on the bottom. And for someone who likes to collect poodles or dogs or, or figurines of dogs, oh, also I definitely washed him so he get a bit of water inside of him, um, they would still think he was pretty sweet even though he's been through a bit of a rough time. Next is this little piece here. So I've heard this decoration referred to as spaghetti, um, porcelain spaghetti ceramic. Uh, he was actually in a bag I did see him through the bag and so I picked him up. He has a small chip on his mustache here, but overall really for his age and, and this spaghetti decoration is very vulnerable to breaks, he's in quite good condition. So he's quite a sweet little poodle piece. And then the fourth poodle is this piece here. I, I can't tell for certain, he may also be chalkware or he may be he actually, he may actually be ceramic. He just has a bit of an unusual feel to his finish. He's decorated with paint on all of his standard poodle haircut palms. He is marked, I believe that is an old gift craft sticker, and he is marked Japan. So he's vintage. He has a bit of an age, of age to him. So that's a nice little set of poodles. I've had good success selling dog figurines and in particular poodle items in the shop. So I, I was glad to pick those up for resale. Next is this little happy dog planter. The reason I would say it's, it's a happy or a lucky puppy planter is because of the presence of the bamboo. Bamboo is, I, I think, associated with luck. This little planter doesn't have a great deal of age. Um, he is not as old as some of the other vintage items we pick up, but I think he is he's really cute and sweet and cute sells. So I think someone will will probably want him as well. Next, something that I picked up for Christmas is this vintage mustache cup and saucer marked simply Merry Christmas in gold. It is marked on the bottom. I didn't, um, I didn't stop to really make out the mark. I imagine it's an English mark. There is a small chip on the rim by the handle here. But for Christmas and for decoration, to put this item out, I think someone will still be happy to, to add him to their collection. 
So if you don't know what mustache cups were for, was not it's not a it's not a cup for use during shaving or anything like that. Shaving mugs are different. This was actually that when you were drinking your tea, if you were a man and you had a mustache, as lots of men did during the Victorian and Edwardian eras, it would protect your mustache from the tea from getting in your cup. These little items here were in a bag together. So there are six fruit and vegetable and four butterfly. I don't know what they are. Um, little ornaments perhaps for your Christmas tree or a decorative tree. I just thought for $3, which is what I paid for the bag, they were interesting and I would sell them together as a lot. So the, the fruits and vegetables would be one lot and the butterflies would be another lot. I just thought they were odd. And honestly, sometimes with the bags, it, you, you kind of want to see what's in them and understand what they are. Um, and that's why I bought it. So, so we'll see if those, if those sell. Next, another bag item was were these sets of kittens. So there is a little set of salt and pepper shakers, long-haired kitties, plastic stoppers. So they are a bit newer, so not a great deal of age, but still quite, quite sweet and cute. And then these little blue and white porcelain kittens. Same thing, not a great deal of age, but sweet collectibles. The next item I picked up is this, this does have quite a bit of age. This is a little set of orange, and I do believe they were intended to be painted orange, cats in that familiar Halloween back arched up alert pose of a cat with a yellow and a red bow. And on the back, as you can, that's that familiar arched look by the cat. And on the back, you can see it is in size Japan. So this little piece of bisque probably does have quite a bit of age. Small chip here on the bottom. I'll keep that for Halloween. That'll be a nice little collectible for someone for Halloween. Next up is this lovely little mid-century dresser drawer or trinket, dresser box or trinket box. I have another item very similar to this that I picked up recently, a, a, a round box with the same pink um, color and gold dust finish. This little box has applied pansies. And again, very unusual to find them with the pansies or the whatever applied flowers are on top undamaged. On this one here, there's only a couple chips of paint, no actual cracks or chips of the flowers or the leaves. Condition-wise, the box is looking pretty good. There is one chip on the underside of the lid, if you can see it here. However, I still picked it up because when you put the dresser box back together, you can't see the chip. It shows perfectly fine. So, lovely little, little trinket box. Keep your rings in, some jewelry, change, etc. Next up are these cute little pair of brown bears. These guys are in Japan. Um, there's a sticker on each of them. Not 100% sure on the maker. The sticker says M O and then either O or C. Um, on both of them, the sticker is torn in the same place with Japan at the bottom there. So I can't actually determine whether that's M O C, M O O, or what that is actually intended to say. But they are Japan. They do have some age. No chips or cracks. Couple paint flakes on the this guy's ears, but really cute little set of, of teddy bears. Next another bag item are these two delightful little mice. One is very uh, matte and bisque, the other one's a bit shiny. Again, I wouldn't say these are extremely old, but I think they have a bit of age. No markings on this one. Interestingly, this little guy here actually has his original sticker and he was $5.49 and he has a Canada stamp. They're sweet. They're not from the same manufacturer, so I will price them separately. This is another item I picked up, um, kind of a nostalgia piece. This is Charlie Brown, of course. And what this is, is a hairbrush. And this is a hairbrush from Avon. And it's actually, see if you can see that, it's actually marked Avon, Charlie Brown, United Features in 1971. So whoever owned this hairbrush decided adding a little bit of color with a marker would be a good idea. 
you could get that off with some um, nail polish remover. I, I may go ahead and remove that. Um, he's in reasonably good shape. Again, he's, he's just a nostalgia piece, you know, if you like Charlie Brown. Cute little piece with some good age, 1971. Next, I've picked up a few of these souvenir trays with different states or provinces on them. This one is New Mexico. The reason I picked this up is because it's in its original packaging. So that gives me a bit of a hint and information about what these were or who made them and, and what forms they came in. So this one is a tray, so just the souvenir tray or wall plaque. And also, this apparently this did come in coasters as well. So these are, these are sweet little souvenir touristy pieces. I believe this item was $1.50, so in the original packaging, well worth picking up. Uh, the last three items from the haul are the three pieces that are the most expensive for this purchase. So overall today, the total expense for this, including tax, was $108. And that does seem like quite a bit for what's sitting here on the table. However, the majority of that cost is made up by the last three items that I'm gonna show you. So this piece here is a lovely piece of Art Deco pottery. It's a vase and it is well marked. Bursley Ware, Charlotte Reed, England. Now, Charlotte Reed's work is quite saleable. Her work with Crown Devon brings a bit more money than her work with, like, under Bursley Ware. However, this form and this decoration and the vase is in excellent condition. So I did, I did pay up for this. This was actually behind the jewelry and showcase counter, and this was $20. So it'll take a while for me to, to recoup my investment on this piece, but someone is going to come along who loves art pottery, who knows who this um, artist is, and is going to be pleased to be able to purchase this piece. I love it. I think it's great. I love the decoration. Next is this mid-century or earlier. Unfortunately, I wasn't actually able to identify the maker of this vase. So this form would be, what would I call it? Fan, a fan vase uh, form, formed by three leaves, as you can see, three or four leaves at the top. It's unmarked, could be one of many US pottery manufacturers. The reason I picked this up are a couple things. Color, this is a really nice blue color with this decoration on the top, almost like the drip glaze. And two, it was filthy. And that's partly sometimes how you know if something has good age. So this vase was used by someone quite frequently or for a long time because it had hard water scale right up to where the water line would be. And I, it's been clean, but I, I did leave a little bit here so you could see how high up the, the marks were on the vase. It was filthy. So a little TLC, a little CLR, to remove those calcium and lime stains. Um, and that vase is in lovely shape. So I'll continue to try to figure out who the manufacturer of this is. Um, it wasn't hugely expensive, it was $8. But that's quite a bit for, for a, a piece of art pottery or, or an art pottery vase. So I am hoping I can identify the manufacturer and be able to, to add that provenance to the vase when I put it up for sale. And the last item is this lamp here. So I, I don't think I need to tell anybody who that is. That is Snow White. And, spoiler alert, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. I looked at this lamp on the shelf and I almost didn't take it for one reason, the shade. So the shade, I, I don't know, all of you people who were born before uh, LED lights and, and, in, and low low heat lights, uh, good old fashioned incandescent light bulbs, don't get too close to them because they will burn you and they will burn things. So clearly somebody's tilted this the wrong way or managed to burn the, to burn the shade with a light bulb. The shade is original to the lamp I believe because it is marked Disney. 
So looking at the condition of the shade, I thought, well, I don't know if I really want to pick this up because the price was $15. So what I did is I took it to usually your thrift store, maybe your thrift store, my thrift stores. Oh, there's our, a guest star, Eugene. Hey, Eugene. Hey, buddy. Is he coming to check out the hall? Okay, don't break anything, okay? Thank you. Sorry, back to the lamp. So I took the lamp over to a plug-in station and I was able to plug it in and I was able to test it and the lamp does work. So the lamp is essentially a nightlight. It has a bulb inside here plus this bulb. And as you turn it on, you can turn on just the nightlight portion, basically the, the main portion or both. So this does need a bulb in the bottom. There's a way to, to pull that out and add a, uh, add a bulb. It's in excellent condition. So what convinced me to take the lamp, hey Eugene, was not just that it was working, but was looking up comparables. So this lamp is listed for sale on sites like eBay and Etsy for around $65 American without the shade. Now I didn't see any sold comparables, however I do think I'm not going to ask that much for the lamp, I'm going to get a bulb for the bottom. I am going to include the original shade with it, however, as I said, this lamp is mostly advertised without a shade. So I, I think it's a, a great little nostalgia piece. I don't know the exact age of the lamp. Um, I'd have to do a little bit more research to try to figure out what year it was manufactured. So that's everything today for our thrift haul. Our total cost, including taxes for everything, like I said, was $108. The majority of that made up by the three last pieces that I showed you. Everything I have here, I should be able to turn a profit on and find a new home for. And I just want to say thank you for watching this video and for meeting Eugene. And uh, if you have any comments or um, if there's a favorite piece here, if there's something you're interested in, feel free to leave us a comment. Thanks again.